Yo, what is going on guys? We're back with another SnowRunner mod review and today I'm super excited because we're checking out this Z2 light truck which is, as you could tell, a Japanese K-truck. Now, the Japanese K-trucks have been something that have interested me for quite a while now and when I saw this on Mod.io I was so excited to jump into it and check it out. It's very well detailed, it's authentic, it is original, and this is the kind of stuff you love to see in SnowRunner guys. So do me a favor, drop a like on the video, drop a sub on the channel, let's start it up and see what it could do. Alright, time to build and customize the Z2 light truck. For those of you that don't know, this is a Japanese K-truck. Engine options. Now, this is something that this mod developer did extremely well. He also put in the mod description on Mod.io that the Z2 engine stage 1, 2, and 3 are a little bit more intense. Uh, maybe even OP and that they're not necessarily needed unless you find the trucks lacking power So I, I'm gonna stick with these two options. So we get the SI 6V 1900 and the SI 6V 2100T I'm gonna go with the 2100T now something that I love is that this mod developer took the time in the description to outline What these engines meant for you as a player now a lot of people Put different things in that are OP or extreme and they don't clearly indicate it and I think that affects the playability of the mod because the average user is probably going to go with the bottom option and the most expensive one and not realize how OP it is. Now when we get in a gearbox we got balance, fine tune, high range and off road. I'm going to go with the off road. This is a really good gearbox no matter what. This K truck is capable of a lot in my opinion. And when it comes to suspension, this gets a little bit different. So we got stalker raised. Now, if I was using this to scout or to recover or to grab an upgrade part or something that just couldn't, you know, wiggle through all the trees, for example, I would probably go with the raised. But I do think we're going to haul some cargo in this. And I'm actually going to go through the different sideboard bed options. I'm really excited for this. But my personal opinion, I think you should stick with the stock suspension because the higher this gets with such a short wheelbase and a stiff suspension, it is gonna bounce and flop around quite a bit. So we're gonna go with the stock suspension. Tires, we got 3135 AS3. Off-road versions, we got 3135 OS1s. And then chained, we got CS1, 31 and 35. And then we also got the 31Z2 tire and the 35Z2 tire. Now I'm gonna go with the 35Z2 tire. This looks like a, I can't tell, but I think this is, uh, original tire from SnowRunner just with some slight modifications. I think it's the same as I can't even remember the name, but it might be custom. If it's not custom, the uh, XML coating is coated so that it's excellent on all surfaces. Winch, we got Stock Scout Extended, Advanced, Autonomous, High Power, and then we got the Z2 Winch and Z2 Console Winch. Now I'm gonna go with the Z2 Winch because you know what, you can never have too powerful of a winch in my opinion, it's always good. And we've got wedge cap snorkel or tall square cap. I like how the tall square cap snorkel is kind of tucked in here. So we're going to go with that. Frame add-ons, this is where it gets awesome. So you can haul some cargo in it and it's cool. It compacts it. But we got the lightweight carrier size one, red light flight van body. And we also got the medium logging frame, short logging frame, lightweight carrier size two. And we've got the armored carrier frame. Now this is really unique. It's got 600 repair parts, two spare wheels, and 800 fuel, which is... It's balanced for every like all the aesthetic here. And then we got fuel tank, 1800 liters, election minivan for fun, I guess. Water tank, now this is awesome because with the new season, you do need water and you need fuel. So in theory, you could put two of these trucks on a trailer or maybe even three of them and have water and fuel and everything else you need. Then we got a stone grilled sweet potato stand. Now this is cool because this goes down to culture, I guess, and it's cool that this mod developer was able to take the Japanese K-Truck and put a little bit of culture into it as well, so it's not just for work. But we're going to go with the um, lightweight carrier size too, because we're going to grab some cargo and I want to see how this kind of stacks through it. Now let's go into the exhaust. we got rear or side exit. We're going to go with the, let's go with the side exit, balancing or balance weighting. Um, we could add some weight to balance it. Now, I find this kind of, how should I phrase it, really uh, jumpy, but I don't want to weight it down too much at the same token because the cargo is probably going to weigh something. So I'm going to, hmm, I'll put 10,000 kilograms on it. Front bumper, you got face one, two, three, and four. Now, four to me reminds me the most of an authentic Japanese K truck. So that's what I'm going to go with. 
we got two rim options. I'm going to go with the HS rims one. And then color options, we got some really good color options here. You could cycle through and see some different combinations, basically. Um, but the white with the black bumper stands out the most to me because this is everything you see when you see Japanese K trucks. All right, let's pull it out and see what it could do. All right, here we go. Engine sounds are nice. Now we're in automatic. We got the all wheel drive and diff lock always on. Let's go grab some cargo from the warehouse just to throw it on and kind of see how this works. I think there's unique packaging, Z2 style. Now, for those of you that are gonna think this truck is kind of silly, it might be to you, but if you really want to get a lot of things done, for example, you could put three of these trucks on a trailer, or, okay, take a, a heavy truck with a flatbed. You could put two or three of these trucks on a flatbed, loaded with cargo, secure them, and then haul a trailer behind the truck and put more cargo on that trailer. Or you could do that with fuel and water and everything else you need in SnowRunner. So I think these kind of bridge a gap and it's gonna bring some unique opportunities uh, to get just get things done with this truck. I think that that's gonna be quite the highlight in my opinion. Now, one thing I've noticed, cause I did record a separate video but the audio got bugged so I'm re-recording today. But sometimes the transmission here kind of, like I'm flooring it. I don't get it. If you're the mod developer, you can come and let me know. I'm curious what it is. It's like they don't get enough traction or the weight just kind of gets to them. So. I can't tell. The weight could be blocking the wheels, I guess to a degree, so to speak. I don't know. It's weird, it's different. I've never seen that happen before in SnowRunner. Um, I'm really curious as to why or how. All right, let's grab some cargo here. So this is cool. So it actually, it anchors it up like this. Now this is unique and I love it. So we've got medium planks and apparently the truck can take three cargo slots. We've got wooden planks, but there's none. Um, we got service spare parts, but there's not enough space. So we can take medium planks. Now I do know if you have the stage one carrier, I think there's more you could take to some degree, but let's load up some medium planks and hit the road again. Yeah, we're in reverse and we're struggling to go. We're struggling. It's, you can see the back wheels are almost like, kind of, uh, this is a really good photo opportunity. Don't hate me. All right. Boom. Just like that. A nice picture of the k -truck. Yeah, it's almost like the back wheels are rubbing against that box, which makes sense because it is kind of clipping but I had hoped that it was just more of a visual clip and that could be what's causing it not to keep driving in some situations. But as you can tell, it's still, it hops around quite a bit still. Put it in a high gear and we stall. Now we'll put it in a low plus, but yeah, we're, we're struggling now. In a low minus, we're struggling. We're going backwards. This is, this is not the way. Uh, maybe this is how they drive. Maybe it's for immersion and realism. I, I'm really curious. I hope the mod developer finds his video, jumps in the comments, and lets us know. So let's see where we should take this truck to. Um, Cause I don't know where we're gonna need the wooden planks realistically, but maybe it doesn't hurt. You know what, let's go all the way around here. Let's go, let's get some highway speed in just because you know, this is more of a, a work truck really than anything. So we'll go across the bridge here and we'll just go to this other warehouse and we'll leave it here. And then we're not far from the gateway if we need to. 
Seems like a perfect route. Fuel consumption is realistic. We are uh, sitting at, you know, 13, 14 liters a minute sometimes. But it is a workhorse. It's probably not meant for fuel efficiency because it's, it's using a lot of power to do anything, really. And even with the off-road gearbox, it's got a nice steady pace and automatic. It's not too top-heavy, especially given the way that the car goes back. I think that's really cool to see because at first glance, when I saw the wood planks stacked up like this, I was like, oh great, this is going to be really top-heavy, but no, it's, it's pretty balanced. Fuel consumption is extremely realistic. If anything, it might be a little unbalanced. I don't know. For the K truck, I don't know. Because in theory, it should be fuel efficient, but also in theory, this little engine's going to work a lot harder, so there's a good chance that that's going to cause it to be a little bit tougher or harsher on fuel. And we're just plowing through this mud. We got really lucky here. That's actually some deep mud, too. So that does not go unnoticed. K truck for the win. This just seems almost perfect, incredibly balanced. Now the back tire is definitely looking a little wobbly and I don't know if it's just a weight, the low tire pressure or all the above. <laughs> Interesting to see how it performs here. Oh, I didn't even need the winch. We had a little hiccup there, but it kind of worked itself out, I guess. You can see how much weight in this K-Truck though, because this thing's digging now. Maybe we need a little more torque for hauling, and maybe we need to add more weight as well, because I do know if you add more weight, you're going to need more torque. And we're just, yeah, we're barely spinning there. So, guys, that's where we're actually going to call it. You know what to do. Drop a like on the video. Drop a sub on the channel, guys. We'll catch you with the next one.